Here's your KNDY updated weatherology forecast for Northeast Kansas and Southeast Nebraska. I'm staff meteorologist Jennifer Wojcicki. Partly cloudy today with a slight chance of snow showers. High of 39. Northwest winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. A dusting of snow today. Get up-to-the-minute weather updates from the Weatherology Weather Center. I'm staff meteorologist Jennifer Wojcicki on KNDY for Northeast Kansas and Southeast Nebraska. Currently 28. Kansas Mid-American Network News. I'm Andy Hoosier. The state of Kansas as they continue to work on tax reform as many legislators are trying to pass a tax cut bill before the end of the 2024 session, especially after the latest rating that Kansas was given, given a D rating as one of the least tax-friendly states in the country. KSNC News reports that according to the survey from Money Geek, they looked at how much hypothetical family would have to pay in taxes if they were a married couple with one dependent, a gross income of roughly $94,000, which is the median national income at the time of the research and home worth that is roughly three hundred and twenty thousand dollars the median price of a new home across the nation showing kansas ranked at 40th across the country estimated at nine thousand three hundred and twenty four dollars making up roughly nine point nine percent of the citizens total income they say the state also barely surpassed the f grade with estimated taxes you'd have to pay between ten to twelve thousand dollars kansas mid-american network news Save green this month at Rusty Eck Ford with discounts on all new vehicles. Truck month is happening now at Rusty Eck Ford. Check out the new Ford F-150, America's number one selling truck for 47 years in a row and counting. Keep more green in your pocket with discounts on all new Fords on our lot. We have it all. F-150, Bronco, Edge, Escape, Explorer, Mustang, and more. You'll luck out with low APR financing options to help you get into the new car, truck, or SUV you need. Follow the rainbow to find your pot of gold, or even better, a new vehicle at Rusty Eck Ford. Come see us at Rusty Eck Ford. Save some green and drive home your new Ford today. Only at Rusty Eck Ford and RustyEckFord.com. WAC offers cannot be combined. See store for details. More industry set to move to the state of Kansas around the state as the latest window and door manufacturing company known as Marvin has announced they will be investing more than $76 million to build a new facility in the Kansas City area. WIBW reports the announcement came from Kansas Governor Laura Kelly saying that Marvin, a premier manufacturer of windows and doors, has selected Kansas City as the future home for their latest plant by building the $76.5 million, 400,000 square foot facility with the anticipation it would be completed by 2020. Five. According to the company, they say they're planning to employ more than 100 members in full-time positions in the area across manufacturing, fabrication, and assembly divisions to produce the company's industry-leading fiberglass window and door solutions. Overall, the company says they want to hire more than 600 employees for part of their workforce in Kansas City alone by 2028. With the expansion, the company of Marvin will be operating in 17 different cities across North America. Kansas Mid-America Network News, I'm Andy Hoosier. Duzine Enterprises has been laying floors all over our area since 1962. That's miles and miles of carpet, laminate, tile, hardwood, and vinyl. And they are so good at it that their schedule is filling up fast. So while good things come to those who wait, if you have a remodel or a new construction project in your near future, you should probably get on their schedule today. So call 785-325-2379. That's 785-325-2379. Duzine Enterprises in Washington. Why would you go anywhere else? Financing available. Nebraska Mid-American Network News. I am Billy Johnson. The Nebraska legislature is preparing for a $4.45 million payout for a carny man after he was profoundly injured in a Grand Island pursuit. The money will go to Miles and Chrissy Margaret's and their attorneys after the amount has been added in an amendment to LB 1188 as that bill has passed out of the Business and Labor Committee. Miles Margaret's of Kearney filed a lawsuit against the state of Nebraska in 2020 after he was hit by a suspect fleeing Nebraska State Patrol back in late December of 2017. The lawsuit claims that Jose Ortiz had stolen a vehicle and was heading north on Highway 281 in Grand Island, leading to authorities trying to stop him, but he fled at a high rate of speed while ignoring traffic signs and signals along with other drivers.
expertise and left Margaret's with serious and permanent injuries requiring extensive hospitalization and multiple surgeries and treatment. Nebraska Mid-America Network News. Access denied. Mm. We've all been there. When you can't connect the thingy to the whatchamacallit and the whatchamacallit can't find the Wi-Fi network. Well, Blue Valley Technologies has a solution that can help you with all your connected devices. Tech Home with unlimited multi-device support to help you get your home connected and even tune up your computer. Find more details at bluevalley.net slash techhome. Reporting local news, I'm Bruce Dierking. U.S. Senator Jerry Moran was in Marysville Monday afternoon to announce federal grants toward local law enforcement, including well over $1 million toward education and training facilities for a new Marshall County Jail and other funding requests for additional equipment for Marysville Police. Today I'm here to announce two grants. I don't know of any other uh, county and city in Kansas that got uh, these dollars in the same county. So a grant to the city of Marysville Police Department uh, and a grant to the Marshall County Sheriff's Department. But the largest one, which is to be used uh, to assist in facilities here in Marshall County for uh, prison and jail facilities, is for $1,383,000. What I also would say is that I hope that in addition to the benefits that you get with Resources going to law enforcement, it also is helpful to you in the pocketbook. As uh, this money was designated in the appropriation bill that just passed, uh, now two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, uh, there's still a little paperwork involved, but the good news is the grant is already pre-approved, and when the paperwork is filed, the money should be available. Moran commented on border security issues and ongoing threats, including criminals and drug activity that may be crossing the U.S. border. I also want to say that as we try to deal with all the challenges we face in communities across Kansas and that law enforcement face every day, um, the, the topic of what takes place at our borders is still hugely important to me and to many of my colleagues in Washington, D.C. Fentanyl and other drugs, precursors, uh, and the traffic that Kansas seems to be in the pathway. We have tremendous challenges in our state and nation because of drugs. And a part of that, significant part of it, is the failure for us to find ways to, to strengthen the border security, keep people out who shouldn't be coming here, and uh, have an immigration system that allows people to come here legally. Additional comments from Jerry Moran as well as local law enforcement on hand at the presentation Monday will be part of our public affairs program airing this Saturday morning at 7.10 on KNDY. Marshall County Agents on Aging presented a proposal for a new generator for the Helvering Center at $65,000 at last week's meeting. Board gave verbal approval to move forward. Later in the meeting, commissioners voted to declare a generator used at the temporary health department location as surplus. Washington County Commissioners heard from the county appraiser that median property values will rise on average 25% this year. The office has heard concerns from citizens who are encouraged to provide documentation if they feel values are not accurate. Kansas State Board of Education held a public hearing Friday afternoon in Bern to receive input regarding USD 115 Nemo Hall Central's petition to transfer territory from USD 113 Prairie Hills in a dispute as to students being sent to Nemo Hall Central from the former Burns School, which was closed in 2012. A closure of the Wetmore School, also which was in USD 113, set off several land transfer requests from adjacent districts, including USD 380 and USD 335, which have been settled. Some 81 square miles remain in contention that Nemo Hall Central is hoping to transfer. Written testimony in the matter may also be submitted to the State Board of Education before April 15th. A recommendation is expected to include a public hearing at the May meeting with a final vote at the June meeting. Kansas Department of Transportation Bridge Replacement Project underway on K-9 in Nemahaw County on Spring Creek, two miles west of Wetmore at the intersection of V Road. During construction, K-9 will be closed in that project area with detours provided. Work will take place through mid-August. 
Axtell Community will celebrate opening the Axtell Clinic, a partnership with Community Memorial Healthcare of Marysville, located inside the Axtell Fitness Center. Community members had reached out for such services as the center was being built. The facility opened in January. A separate entrance at the south end of the building opens to two patient exam rooms, a waiting area, reception, and office space. Primary care providers staff the facility. Physical therapy services can also be scheduled locally. An open house is planned Wednesday with tours and a complimentary lunch serving 11.30 until 1 at the Community Physicians Clinic in Axtell. Stanley Mueller, age 69, in Frankfurt, passed away March 19th. Funeral service Wednesday, March 27th, 1030 at the Frankfurt United Methodist Church. Burial in the Frankfurt Cemetery. Visitation Tuesday, 10 until 9. The family will see friends Tuesday from 5 until 7 at the Padden Funeral Chapel in Frankfurt in charge of arrangements for Stanley Mueller. Victoria F. Tory Johnson, age 33, of Frankfurt, passed away Monday. Memorial service is planned Friday, 1030 at the Salem Lutheran Church, south of Axtell. Visitation Thursday, 530 until 7 at the church, with the Christy Anders Funeral in Waterville in charge of arrangements for Tory Johnson. James E. Jim Picolette, age 79, of Frankfurt, passed away Thursday. Private service will be held with the Patton Funeral Home in charge of arrangements for Jim Picolette. Cindy K. Rose, age 65, of Waterville, passed away Thursday. Private celebration of life service will be held by family at a later date with a Christy Anders funeral of Waterville in charge of arrangements for Cindy Rose. On the Marshall County Senior Citizens Lunch Menu today, Polish sausage, seasoned mashed potatoes, sauerkraut, peas, and cinnamon applesauce. Tomorrow, barbecue chicken, baked beans, cucumber salad, and tropical fruit. Key and DY News time is 7.15. Don't have time to stop by a bank to open an account? No problem. With United Bank & Trust, we make it easy by bringing our bank to you. Whether you're at home, at work, or anywhere you have access to a computer, simply go to ubankonline.com and click on the Open an Account icon. Save time by opening an account online with United Bank & Trust. It's banking for your way of life. Member FDIC. Here's your KNDY weatherology forecast for Northeast Kansas and Southeast Nebraska. A winter weather advisory is currently in effect for much of Southern Nebraska until late this morning. Some snow showers throughout the region early on today, then staying partly sunny and breezy with our highs in the upper 20s and lower 40s throughout the region. Northwest winds between 15 and 25 and gusting as high as 35. Clear skies overnight with our lows in the mid to upper teens. Mostly sunny into Wednesday with our highs in the lower 40s and lower 50s and clear skies into Wednesday night with our lows in the mid-20s and lower 30s. More sunshine and warmer into Thursday with our highs in the upper 50s and upper 60s. Southwest winds between 5 and 15 and gusting as high as 25. Then partly cloudy skies into Thursday night with our lows in the upper 30s and mid-40s. South winds between 15 and 20 and gusting as high as 30. Sunny and even warmer into Friday with our highs in the lower 60s and mid-70s. Southwest winds between 15 and 20 and gusting as high as 30. Then partly cloudy skies into Friday night with our lows in the mid-30s and lower 40s. I'm meteorologist Carol Foster. Average high temperature late March 60, record high on this day 90. The average low 35 and the record low is 5. Sunrise this morning 720, sunset this evening at 745. Cloudy, overcast, 28 degrees. Watch out, could be a few slick spots this morning, if anything, uh, wet overnight. Temperatures below freezing, it's 28 this hour. That's a check of the morning news and weather for this Tuesday, the 26th of March. KNDY News Time, 717. I'm Bruce Dierking reporting. With Easter right around the corner, gifts and goodies for all ages are sure to be found at Reflections Hallmark in downtown Marysville. Fill your Easter basket with delectable chocolates, Hallmark cards, K-State and KU memorabilia, or decor for your home or garden. Entertain the kids with toys for all ages, and through Easter, all plush toys are 25% off. Open Monday through Saturday. Hop into Reflections Hallmark in downtown Marysville. So much more than your favorite Hallmark store. The Norris Motor Company in Marysville has a new 2024 Chevy Silverado 1500 model work truck and a Silverado 1500 High Country Edition. 
They also have the new 2024 Chevy Blazer and Chevy Trailblazer. See for yourself and take a test drive at the Norris Motor Company in Marysville today. From ABC Sports, this is Rich Cantu. I never bet on baseball, any other sports, or never have asked somebody to do it on my behalf. The words of Dodgers star Shohei Otani through new interpreter Will Ireton speaking for the first time about the gambling scandal involving fired interpreter Ipe Mizuhara. The two-time MVP saying he didn't know about Mizuhara's gambling and that money was sent from his bank account to a bookmaker without his knowledge. Women's March Madness now. Paige Buckets Beckers leading former powerhouse UConn to the Sweet 16, scoring 32 in the Huskies' 72-64 decision over Syracuse. Head coach Gino Auriemma. You know, we have the best player in America. And, you know, just saying that because the numbers in this world of analytics, the numbers say that she is. Not the usual 90-plus point affair for one-seed Iowa. The Hawkeyes eking out a 64-54 victory over eight-seed West Virginia in Caitlin Clark's last-ever college home game, Clark post-game. To me, this is like one of the hardest rounds in the NCAA tournament. Everybody is really good. You're expected to win. You're on your home court. We have all the pressure in the world. NBA, it was the Knicks' Dante DiVincenzo's night in New York. Fourth quarter, sitting on 10 made threes and tied for the single game Knicks record. He's in the corner. Flynn guards him. They're looking for him. Here he is. Right side. Three-pointer. There's the record. The call on 98.7 ESPN New York. The Knicks cruise to a 124-99 shellacking of the Pistons. Around the association, the Hawks erased a second quarter 30-point deficit to beat the Celtics 120-118. The Spurs minus Victor Wembenyama shocked the Suns 104-102. The Bulls lost to the 45 games under 500 Wizards 107-104. This is Rich Cantu, ABC Sports. If you love to travel, Capital One has a rewards credit card that's perfect for you. With Venture X, earn unlimited double miles on everything you buy and turn everyday purchases into extraordinary trips. Plus, receive premium travel benefits like access to over 1,300 airport lounges where you just check in and chill out. Open up a world of possibilities with Capital One. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. Lounge access is subject to change. See CapitalOne.com for details. Offer not valid in all states or prohibited by law. Loans are subject to lender approval. See website for details. Honey, the credit card bill came and we're maxed out. Maxed out cards. Rent is due. We just need some extra cash to help us get by. Maybe we should go to 27cash.com. With our bad credit? 27cash.com is one of the largest personal loan networks. They can help people with any type of credit get up to $5,000 and cash can hit our bank account as soon as tomorrow. When you need extra cash, go to 27cash.com. That's 27cash.com. 27cash.com. This is Lloyd Garver at Garver's Honda in February, Nebraska. They call me the old man because I've been in the motorcycle business in the same town for 67 years. I started selling with new Harley-Davidson, took on Hondas in 1959. Now the ATVs and the side-by-side are the going thing. I took on another make of side-by-sides. These are three-seaters with heavy-duty enclosed cabs, air-conditioned, heater, Cable winch, light bar, you'd be proud to own one. Yes, they have mag wheels and even a windshield wiper. The best part, they sell out the door for only $25,999. You can't go wrong with Garber's Honda. Good Tuesday morning. Sam's back with your latest agricultural news here through the Mid-America Ag Network. And it is Tuesday morning, and at these times, we check in with the latest Steckline Report with Larry Steckline. What's the latest, Larry? Well, friends, when we look at what's happening on the discussion around the Farm Bill, let's go to the corn growers meeting just a few days ago, where they talked a lot about the farm program needing to be reworked to the extent that base acres should be updated. Well, they couldn't hardly agree to that at the meeting. The vote was 73 to 51 to keep pressing Congress for a mandatory update of base acres. They do have one thing in their favor. It does look like it 
to save, according to a USDA man, $1.9 billion over 10 years. It does have some legitimate people looking at it, especially those people that want to whack the price out of that farm program. That's on the farmer's side, and they're not all convinced that this should be a good deal. Naturally, we got to talk about the other big issue, which is the same one that's been around for 100 years, the SNAP program. They are really fighting that one out again. I can remember the last farm bill. In fact, every farm bill that I can remember when they were talking about the SNAP program was the biggest problem. And it's 75 percent of the cost of the farm bill. So it's not a shock. I said 75 percent of the cost of the farm bill is the SNAP program. The boys on the hill that tell us they think to keep that money in a farm bill discussion area will keep the farm bill, re the real farm bill, in front of the pe people that need it in front of. So we'll have to wait and see how all that turns out. But I still say, and I vote for keeping the one we've got for another two or three years at least. Thanks for being with us. If you're expanding or replacing herd bulls, Lewenberger and Waterville has 20 high-quality Sim Angus cross bulls ready for immediate pickup or delivery. With calving ease and strong growth characteristics, these yearling and two-year-olds warrant your attention. Call Lewenberger Waterville today, 785-268-0647. From Kansas State University, this is Agriculture Today. I'm Jacob Clout. When grazed correctly, crabgrass serves as a great source of nutritive value for cattle. K-State Beef System Specialist Jamie Lynn Farney discusses the benefits of grazing crabgrass and considerations before introducing it. It is very highly nutritive, particularly in regards to protein concentration. It's not uncommon for me to see greater than 12% crude protein on a dry matter basis for this. And it is very, very responsive to fertility. For example, 50 units of nitrogen gives you one ton of hay. So it's something that's very, very prolific and you can have a, quite a bit of tonnage from there. So if you're looking to go ahead and establish it, it works very well in any crop fields that you're wanting to turn back into pasture ground. But a good clean area, the more soil surface it has, the quicker it'll get germinated and be able to go. So you only want to put it about a quarter inch deep. And you don't put very much seed out, four to six pounds a lot of seed per acre. It's one that we're looking at now to order your seed, but you do not put it in the soil till it starts warming up. It needs to be at least soil temperature greater than 55 degrees Fahrenheit. She relays the ideal time for grazing crabgrass. You have to strategically graze that crabgrass at the right time. It is a warm season, and as soon as it gets cold, that plant dies. I mean, there is the very little nutritive value. So typically we say that you can have really good grazing first part of May to about September 15th, maybe the first of October. After that, it's just not going to support your animal production. Barney explains how eastern Kansas producers who implement crabgrass in their grazing plans could graze cattle for most of the year. So if you're in an area that has a lot of cool season perennials, like southeast Kansas, we have fescue. Northeast Kansas, you have brome. Those are cool season perennials. They go dormant. They don't have as good a quality forage during the summer. You can use crabgrass to fill that hole. A lot of folks who are utilizing their crop ground to the greatest degree, they'll put rye or wheat in the winter. That's your cool season annual. And then they'll put crabgrass as the summer. And they'll just kind of rotate those crop acres back and forth between those two grass species that gives you you know the ability to potentially graze 10 months out of the year that was k-state beef system specialist jamie lynn farney on crabgrass she urges producers to use crabgrass as a filler supplement in grazing systems because drought conditions heavily affect plant growth i'm jacob clout this has been agriculture today over the k-state radio network Clothing, boots, accessories, and more in stock at Valley Vet Supply in Marysville, where great prices come with friendly service. For the Western or everyday work lifestyle, I'll fit every member of your crew with jeans, boots, shirts, outerwear, and accessories, too. Plus, ranchers know that everything to keep your animal healthy and safe is found at Valley Vet. 
Order online for delivery or pickup in store. Valley Vet Supply in Marysville, your dedicated source for all things livestock, pet, and horse supplies. One of this month's most important weather words is albedo. We tell you why on the Old Farmer's Almanac Radio Report. If you're a farmer or rancher, chances are you've thought about joining Kansas Farm Bureau. So what's stopping you? Your membership means you have a seat at the table when it comes to the issues that affect your farm. Things like trade, taxes, water, and regulations. The state's largest farm advocacy organization brings your message to policy decision makers at the county, state, and national level. The voice of agriculture becomes your voice and fights for Kansas farmers and ranchers. And a Kansas Farm Bureau membership includes other benefits. For about $50 a year, you'll receive discounts on equipment and supplies, cell phone plans, financial and legal support, home and office supplies, and more. You'll also receive Kansas Living, a quarterly lifestyle magazine featuring real stories of farmers and producers around the state, plus great recipes, crafts, and things to see and do in Kansas. Join us today. Visit kfb.org slash farmer rancher to learn more. With more practical tips and useful advice, this is the Old Farmer's Almanac Radio Report for Tuesday, March 26th, the 86th day of the year. Country singer Kenny Chesney turns 56, and R&B legend Diana Ross has a birthday as well. Dr. Jonas Salk announced a vaccine for polio on this day in 1953. You may have never heard your local weather forecaster use the word albedo, but it can make a drastic difference in your local weather. Albedo refers to exactly how much radiation is reflected by a surface. Snow-covered ground has a high albedo, reflecting much of the sun's energy back into space. It means a snow-covered region can be as much as 10 degrees cooler than an area that has lost its snow cover. So if springtime isn't arriving as quickly as you'd like, blame it on the albedo. That is the Old Farmer's Almanac Radio Report. Learn more and find your local outlook at almanac.com. It's 7.30 from Key Indy Wine. 28 degrees puts us below the freezing mark, so look out. Might be a slick spot on the steps or such this morning. Cooler highs only around 40 today, 50 tomorrow. Look out, Easter weekend, pretty decent. We'll be back in the above seasonal range by Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Kansas Mid-American Network Sports. I'm Andy Hoosier. The uh, Division I men's basketball tournament, or known as March Madness, continues on going into the Sweet 16 on Thursday this week with many of the Big 12 teams still hanging on within the tournament. Right now, some of the front runners include the number one Houston Cougars as they work their way through Longwood through round number one and Texas A&M in round number two. They're now set to play against Duke in the Sweet 16 as they wrapped up their season number one in the Big 12 Conference. Right behind them are the number two Iowa State Cyclones as they've worked their way up to the Sweet 16 as well, taking on number three Illinois after beating South Dakota State and Washington State. The number four Kansas Jayhawks fell to Gonzaga over the weekend as they move on to the Sweet 16, taking on at number one at Purdue. The Sweet 16, along with the Elite Eight, come up and play throughout this weekend with the Final Four going through next weekend, followed by the National Championship for that Division I men's basketball tournament. Kansas Mid-American Network Sports. Tuesday, scheduled high school baseball and softball action. Marysville teams will host St. Mary's. Valley Heights teams will host Blue Valley. It'll be moved up to a 3 o'clock start for the baseball games in Blue Rapids and softball games in Waterville. Monday baseball action, Frankfurt Centralia remains undefeated, taking Hiawatha in a doubleheader 13-8 and 15-5. Valley Heights in action Friday. The baseball team falls to Chapman 11-1 and 18-0, while the softball team fell at Chapman 10-0 and 12-3. Marysville baseball team in their opener over Hiawatha in a doubleheader in baseball 10-2 and 8-7. The softball team took Royal Valley 4-3 and 10-9. Also last Thursday, Frankfurt baseball over Blue Valley 17-0 and 16-4, while the Frankfurt Centralia softball team split with Jackson Heights 5-3 and 8-19. In the season opener for Frankfurt Centralia last Tuesday, the baseball team took Onega 15-13 and 13-3. Softball defeated Jeff County North 19-10 and 20-3. KNDY.